webinar. Uh, hello to you as well, Katarina. Uh, nice to have you here from, uh, from Lisbon. So the content of today's webinar, I've been looking forward to this for a long time because we are going to hear about content marketing 4.0, how to innovate the digital experience with interactivity. And some of the things you will take away from today's webinar is you'll get a clear understanding of what interactive content marketing is and why leading brands are using it today. You'll hear about the three-step process for higher conversion, which I guess will interest all of us, as well as how to unlock powerful customer data and leverage that data for maximum ROI. Before I pass on the microphone to, to Neha, there's just a few things that I'd like to share with you. First of all, uh, I'd like to mention the uh, physical events that we have upcoming on Friday in this one. We have a breakfast seminar about the trends in marketing technology, data driven marketing and email marketing. Uh, in Amsterdam, uh, our partner, the GMA, organizing this magnificent conference, uh, Mint Global. There are a few seats left for that. They, that includes a canal dinner cruise, which last year was very interesting. We have the CMA coming up in Dubai in April. And as you see, we have the digital marketing masterclasses, a two-day one taking place in Nairobi in May, as well as a one-day digital marketing masterclass taking place in Kigali that green city in Rwanda and another one coming up in Uganda. And this information you'll find on our website and you, you're obviously receiving our newsletter so you get information if it's relevant to uh, your location as well. I also want to mention that of course you get the slide decks uh, after the webinar, but we do ask you to, to spend three, four minutes completing the evaluation survey that you will get at the very latest tomorrow morning. So once you've filled the evaluation survey, then you will immediately be able to download the slides. In case you want the recording, uh, unfortunately, we cannot give you that for free. That's not part of our way of doing things, but you can purchase that for uh, $99 if you wish. And I also have a survey uh, that you should be able to um, fill in now. Uh, I hope you're seeing the survey. I think there might be something wrong on my side. You are seeing the survey. So the question is, which of the following is your biggest challenge related to content marketing? And there are four choice, five choices actually. Proving the return on marketing investment, is, is that it? Or is it the resources, whether it's conceptualizing what actually to do, writing or deploying your content? Is it getting the audience traction and reach? Is that would you find to be the biggest challenge? Then you click on that one. And then the last one is lack tools to be able to quickly create engaging content beyond sort of the traditional uh, blog post. So I see that 10 of you have already uh, given your vote. So I'll just leave this up for, for 30, uh, 40 seconds to get a few more people uh, to uh, vote. So it's very interesting. The results see that the the majority at the moment from the live update that I see here believe that proving return on marketing investment is the biggest challenge right now. And that's closely followed by the resources involved in actually making content marketing work for the, the business and the audience that you're trying to engage. So I'll just leave it for another uh, 10, 15 seconds to get the last of you to uh, to, to cast your vote. Of course, I'm hoping that 100% of you will actually help us uh, cast your vote here. It's never happened before in the history of webinars that 100% of the attendees actually voted, but perhaps today is the day. We got about 80% of us have voted so far. You just need to click the, the answer that you feel best applied to you. Okay, I'll, I'll take us out of our misery here. So thank you so much for so many of you who, who did participate in this survey. And let's uh, see the result. So here's the result. And as I mentioned, proving return on marketing investment, probably not a surprise that this is something that we are all struggling with. I certainly recognize that for, from what I'm doing in, in Marquito and in Gitma. And resources, of course, is often a challenge, but it's good to see that a number of you also believe that you lack the tools to be able to quickly create engaging content beyond blog posts because I think you'll learn from Neha that's part of what content 4.0 
is all about. So we'll share these results with you as part of the follow-up material. Now it's time to actually pass the microphone over to the person you came here to hear from. Her name is Niha Mishandani, and she is currently with a company called Dot. And the website, I'm going to type that here in case you are curious what that's all about. Uh, it's dot, dot VU. It's a little bit interesting uh, website there. So Neha has a lot of experience in this uh, space. And I'll let, you, uh, I let her tell you a little bit more about herself. And we'll now pass the microphone over to Neha. Great. Uh, thank you, Michael. Um, hi everyone, my name is Neha, and I am the product and marketing manager. Before we begin, I would just like to thank you all uh, for joining us today. I know you must have a very busy schedule, so I'll do my best to make these 60 minutes as useful for you as possible, so that you can leave with loads of ideas and inspiration for your content marketing. Oh, I can hear, okay, uh, people say that they can't hear me. Um, sorry about that. Um, I'm going to try and move closer to my computer. I hope this works. Yes, uh, I think that's a good idea. But if you do have a headset and you want to take one or two minutes to just switch to your headset, that's also okay, Neha. Um, I actually, I, I only have this, unfortunately. Uh, okay, so, yeah, just as long as you keep the, the, the mouth close to the microphone, that would be great. Yeah, um, I hope this is better. Um, maybe you have some feedback uh, in a few people out there. And just tell me if you can hear me now. Great. Okay, great. So, um, as I mentioned earlier, uh, as Michael mentioned, I work at a company called Dot, which is a new interactive content marketing platform. Now, maybe you're wondering what the heck does she mean by interactive content? Well, uh, interactive content is different because it gets people to actively participate in your content. So instead of just passively reading a blog post or watching a video, they interact with your content by choosing their own journeys, uh, answering questions or coming in. And our goal is to empower marketers like you to start creating engaging interactive content like quizzes, assessments, interactive videos, personality tests, games, and mm. more. <clears throat> Neha, Neha, I, I'm sorry to interrupt you. Can I ask you to do something? Because people are still having issues with, with the sound. Uh, if you look at the microphone icon at the lower, you see there's a little drop down arrow there. If you click on that, you should see uh, where it says gain, and you have the possibility to slide that all the way to the max. Could you try that, please? How about now? Is that better? Much better. Much better. OK, Can all right. <laughs> sorry sorry for, the, for the technical issues, uh, guys. Um, but it seems like we are on track now. So, as I was saying, um, my company's goal is to empower marketers like you to start creating engaging interactive content like quizzes, assessments, interactive videos, personality tests, games, and more on your own without needing any IT support. Now, uh, so without further ado, let's just dig in. Now, um, content marketing, right? is it exactly? Um, we hear this term tossed around so often these days, and it's on every marketer's agenda, but what does it mean exactly? So I found this definition online, which goes something like this. Content marketing is a strategic marketing approach focused on creating and distributing valuable, relevant, and consistent content to attract and retain a clearly defined audience and ultimately to drive profitable actions. Now, those are a lot of words. Um, and I think I have a simpler way to look at it, uh, which is something like this. You know, instead of being that marketer who has the megaphone pointed at the customer's ear, screaming, buy my stuff, or 
here why my product is so great. You start being more useful and helpful, serving knowledge, inspiration, utility, help, advice, or perhaps even fun to the customer. And, you know, why do we do this? Um, there are loads of reasons why content marketing is such a great practice. Um, first and foremost, we want to educate our customers, right? It's not just about our product, service, or offering, but about our area of expertise or domain. We want to help uh, our audience make better decisions and to establish trust so that they can rely on us for valuable information. Also, we want to stand out from the differentiate our business, right? We want to catch the customer's eye and capture their attention. Thirdly, and very importantly, we want to use content marketing as a lead generation engine. Now, if you work at a B2B company, this is probably even more so for you. Um, you want to capture more email opt-ins and leads so that you can grow your subscriber or audience base and arm your sales teams with leads. And of course, in today's uh, social media age, you want to encourage your own audience to react, comment, or share your content because people trust each other uh, more than they do companies, right? And word of mouth truly is the best way to get traction. So of course, content marketing for social media makes sense. Um, now, uh, here's something we don't hear much of today, but it's really important. Content marketing is a great way to learn more about your customer her needs, her pains, preferences, and much more. It's a big topic, um, but we'll touch upon that uh, later in the presentation today. And, you know, at the end of the day, we all have bosses, uh, we all have KPIs to meet. Uh, we need our content to ultimately drive profitable customer action. And by that, I mean, ultimately, we need content marketing to positively impact our uh, company's sales. So, you know, in a nutshell, this is why we're doing content marketing today. Um, that said, though, you know, truly content marketing has come of age. It is a great practice with loads of benefits for companies, which is why it has taken up, uh, picked up so much in the last few years. And today, companies are spending so much more time and money on more than ever before. And we are really churning out more email newsletters and blog posts and ebooks, webinars, videos, and podcasts than ever before. So there is a lot of clutter out there. And you know, what does that mean for our customers? It means that they are increasingly overburdened with content. You know, just think of how many blogs and ebooks uh, are out there, how many can one be? And you know, the result is that today's content consumers' attention span is constantly shrinking. Now, if you think of the amount of people in your target audience, would you say that they are increasing at a quick rate? Uh, size of the size of the audience? Uh, probably not, right? I mean, but the amount of content available online today is increasing exponentially. And if you take those two numbers and divide available audience attention by available content, you will get the available attention per content asset, which is you know, going to grow smaller each day. So that's something to keep in mind as well. Now, you know, another trait of today's content consumer is that she is impulsive and individualistic. Um, and what does that mean? You know, we are in the age of the selfie. People take pictures, they share them on Instagram and Facebook, and it really is about them. Uh, you know, it's about my friends, my life, my job, and marketers need to learn something uh, from that. So that's another thing to keep in mind when we are content marketing today. Lastly, it is getting tougher to convert online. Um, now, marketers have been using many different convert tactics uh, over the last couple of years online. And this is your classic one. Um, you know, uh, what we do is, uh, you know, the stated ebook thing. Uh, so the marketer will dangle an ebook and ask people to fill out a long form in exchange for it. Now, this is a tried and tested tactic that has worked for a lot of companies. So again, everyone has jumped on the bandwagon. Um, as a, and as a result, you know, is, is that not all ebooks are of good quality. 
So it is getting more and more the case that customers fill out forms and they feel disappointed uh, with the content at the end of it. And even if you're a reputed company with a great ebook, people are becoming less and less willing to share their details because whether the content is great or not, they are sure that after filling out the form, they will certainly start receiving emails from a marketer. So people are getting more and more wary with this uh, technique here. But we are not here to discuss problems. We are here to come up with innovative solutions. And like any practice or field, content marketing also evolves with time. You know, when market dynamics shift and when technology improves, we experience a new wave or a trend. And I think a great way to discuss innovation is by looking at how content has evolved in the past and how it will evolve in the future. But before starting with the future perspectives, let's take a few steps back. Um, now, content marketing, as we know it, uh, you know, really took off in the digital space. Um, so websites and blogs were born, you know, marketers suddenly got the chance to reach loads more people with minimal investment. And it was all about creating text content while some you know um while some of that was to you know get content directly to the audience a lot of times there was an indirect person we were dealing with which is the search engine really mostly google right so a lot of this first wave of content marketing became about hits you know uh, finding the right keywords writing the right text and getting hits but with time you know everyone figured out what rules to follow or maybe got an seo expert to figure it out and once everyone could start doing it everyone did start doing it and now it's getting harder and harder to get traction um, with seo so you know that brings me to the next wave um, then we got to the part where it was the social media age you know and things started to move away from this seo focus and more towards creating content that's meant for humans um, and now we're talking you know beautifully designed ebooks infographics videos and so on and you know now as you will notice with each successful wave that we discuss you know it's all about breaking through the noise and um, you know getting your content to reach people but again even with rich content uh, everyone now is doing more or less the same thing and it's getting harder and harder for any one company to stand out so um, you know, that brings me to the next wave. Um, now, while these first two waves were all about, you know, creating more content for everyone in an untargeted way, the third wave uh, was all about super targeted, personalized content. So content that is filtered down and served to people based on their interests. Now, this sounds great in theory, right? But there are some issues with it. Firstly, it's a math. So it's a probabilistic guess based on historical data. And, you know, people change, uh, their preferences change and needs change. So if you're going by data that's old, you might show the wrong content or the, to the wrong person and potentially lose opportunity. So there are issues here as well. And, you know, now an interesting thing uh, about these first three waves is that they are all about passive content. So the customer, when they consume this kind of content, they are just sitting there, they're reading a post or, or watching a video, and they don't actually do anything actively. And that's why we are now going to start seeing a shift over from the passive to the interactive, um, you know, as we go on with time. And, and here's why. Um, we discussed earlier a few of the challenges we are facing with today's content consumer. And, you know, interactive content is relevant because it offers solutions to those problems. For example, if, you know, today's digital audience is overburdened with content, you know, our content should be quick and easy to consume. If their attention span is shrinking, our content should be differentiated. And if our audience is impulsive and individualistic, that means it's all about me, 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 our content should be personalized to their individual needs. And if it's getting tougher to convert online, then our content should actually be worth the permission. It should be worth filling out that gated uh, form, you know, the lead gen form or the opt-in form. So, you know, those that is uh, the perspective that we're taking here. And 
you know, that brings us to content marketing 4.0, which is all about interactive content. Now, as I mentioned earlier, interactive content is different because it gets people actively participate in your content experience. They interact with your content by choosing their own journeys, answering questions or by playing. And there are various formats here, things like quizzes, personality tests, so on and so forth. And, you know, that said, content, you know, interact content isn't an absolutely new thing. Uh, brands have been doing it now for a couple of years. And they have been doing it in different ways, you know, creating these quizzes, uh, interactive videos, interactive ebooks, assessments, and so on. We'll dig more into those types a bit later. I won't, I won't start on that now. Um, but, you know, what's common here for all of these companies has been that, you know, they are doing this um, at a cost. Uh, these companies are larger. They have, you know, teams of developers or outsourced it and loads of programmers and money and time going into creating these forms of content. And that's kind of what we thought. We thought, what if we take some of those barriers away and kind of make it easier uh, for anyone to uh, create this kind of content? So we mainstreamed um, the most popular forms of interactive content into customizable marketing apps. And at this point, you're probably wondering, you know, what the heck is a marketing app? Um, marketing apps are not native apps that are stored on your smartphone. They are responsive web apps and web apps run on the browser. So people don't have to download them, which is great because honestly, I mean, how many apps can you have on your phone, right? People normally use the same four to five apps on a daily basis, normally social apps or specific utility apps. So companies who spend loads of money on developing custom native apps may not really get their money's worth at the end of the day. But yes, marketing apps have the same kind of, you know, idea behind them, all about lightweight functionality. Now, um, you know, what is the value of interactive content? Um, how does it stack up against passive content? Now, um, I created this quiz a while ago uh, called What is Your Marketing Superpower? Which I actually got the inspiration from, from this blog post right here on the left, um, this very long blog post. And how the quiz works is like this. So uh, you start the quiz, uh, you answer questions, and then before displaying the results, I um, made an optional opt-in form. Now, um, I chose to make it optional so people could skip it, but as a marketer, you can also choose to make this kind of opt-in form mandatory so people have to fill it out before they get their results. And that's a clever way of actually getting, um, of getting leads in or uh, opt-ins in. Now, um, and then, yes, sorry, <laughs> I forgot to mention that. And then at the end, you know, you get a result, which is um, what is your marketing superpower? So it tells you you are, uh, an analytical marketer, or you are a creative marketer, or your strength is uh, social media, or your strength is lead generation, whatever that is, it gives you a more you know, personalized custom outcome. And you can also uh, challenge your friends and get social track, you know, get, get, the, get things rolling in that way. So let's assess, I mean, if we compare, right, if we compare the two, uh, let's assess the value for the customer. Now, comparing the value of uh, the passive versus interactive, you know, the long blog post, it probably took something like eight minutes to consume, whereas a, a little quiz, it takes something like a minute, uh, which is a lot quicker. Uh, so that has value for the customer because they are getting value quicker out of what they're consuming. And the blog post is, you know, the same for everyone, whereas the quiz, you know, it has personalized results for everyone based on what they're answering. And, you know, blog posts, there are a lot of words in there. Again, blog posts are great for SEO, don't get me wrong. Um, but, you know, for human beings, it's a lot of time that you need to spend. It's wordy, it's boring, whereas this is a little bit more engaging and entertaining. So, you know, that's great. A value for the customer is, is what we want. But again, what is the value for us as marketers, right? Um, we have seen an explosion of blogs online today. And it's so hard to differentiate unless you have like a top notch production team and you have, you know, create, you've been doing it for years and you have traction. It is getting really hard to differentiate. 
Um, and if you compare that with a quiz, if you if you if you envision this on a social somebody's social media um, uh, feed, right, on your social feed, this kind of thing it pops, it stands out more a little bit. So that is a definite advantage for the marketer. Other than that, you know, what does uh, from normal passive uh, techniques, you know, what kind of insights do you really learn? You can probably know from a blog post that you know how many hits you got, the clicks or the location of the people who came to your blog post. Whereas with interactive experiences like that quiz, you know all of that, but you also know what people are interacting with on your content. Where are they clicking, uh, and what are they answering um, for all of your questions? So there's a lot more to learn from there, and. You know, the last point we talked about conversion a little bit earlier. Um, it is a little bit harder. You know, if you think about blogs today, uh, the conversion is, you know, subscribe to my blog. And um, I mean, think of yourself, how many blogs do you subscribe to every day? Probably not, right? Uh, it is getting harder to get that subscription happen with blogs. So if you try and do things a little bit more creatively, you know, with, with conversion tactics, try uh, what I talked about earlier, you might have a better conversion rate uh, with a quiz like that. So, you know, moving on, um, apart from all of the value I get, I also get a lot of insights. Uh, this is really important. Now, my quiz was something like five to seven questions. And um, I learned so much from those five to seven questions. Um, firstly, I could tell that 96% of the people who started the quiz actually completed it. And those who didn't, they started dropping off at question five. So I could see that, okay, uh, perhaps that's where things got a bit boring for people. And those who didn't, uh, you know, and I could also see uh, where people were clicking and what they were answering on. And more importantly, I could see exactly who participated. I have just blurred this out for, um, for, um, the privacy purposes, but I could see who was uh, answering uh, and what what they were clicking on, and I could also tell um, you know what their personality type was, and um, I had all of that data at my disposal. And what I did was I actually used this quiz before uh, speaking at an event, which was great because I went into that uh, I was a keynote speaker. I went in knowing about my audience. I stood there having kind of a visual. Um, on who is sitting there in my audience. So these kind of techniques are also great to learn about your audience. Now, um, you know, what kinds of interactive content can you create? Here are a few options. I won't mouth all of them out, but you know, you can mix a quiz with a personality test, or you can put a contest inside a video. You can do all kinds of things uh, by mixing and matching apps and also perhaps applying your own custom logic to it. And you know, with that, you really have endless possibilities with interactive content. So, um, you know, let's say that you like the idea, right? Interactive content, let's do it. But, you know, where do we start? Like, how do you know what kind of content you should create and where you should really get started with interactivity? And I think, a good way to look at it is actually to think of, okay, what are my pains? Uh, where is my content um, lacking? And, you know, a way to do that is to really start assessing, you know, take a little bit of in introspect a bit, think about yourself, um, you know, does your content improve brand awareness? How effective is your content at differentiating your brand? How effective is your content at educating your audience? Uh, how effective are you at getting shared socially? You know, try and look at these issues and rate yourself um, on this scale. And if you find that you have more reds here, then focus on those areas and then take it from there. So um, that brings me to the next point. Now, another way to figure out where you should create interactive content or what you should be doing is by assessing your buyer's journey. Now, this is your classic uh, funnel, right? Um, where it starts with early, mid, and late. So, you know, at the early stage, uh, you and your audience are strangers, you don't know each other. Um, at the mid stage, your customer knows who you are and you want to build trust by inspiring and educating them. Whereas at the late stage, you want to start pushing for, uh, for sales. 
And you know, this bio journey, it's different for different companies. Um, if you are, uh, you, know, you know, if you're selling complex B2B solutions, it might be a longer process. Whereas if you are selling, you know, impulse B2C purchases, you know, impulse um, products that are more B2C oriented, perhaps it's a shorter cycle. So, um, you know, think about what makes sense for you or what your model looks like. And if I dig into that a bit, you know, at the early stage of focus, as I said, um, you know, you and your prospect are strangers. So you really want to deliver content that's lightweight, that's easy to digest, and that's worth sharing. So things like quizzes, personality test games, uh, interactive infographics, interactive videos, all of these formats are really great at this early stage. These are really formats that are, you know, lightweight, they're easy to digest, and they're worth sharing. Now, um, I so far, I've been putting out a lot of concepts out there and <laughs> not giving you a lot of uh, visual on what I'm talking about. So I'll take a few examples. Now, you know, top of the funnel content. This could be something like this quiz we have uh, with one of our clients um, called Len, uh, Lenpool Fewa. And with this uh, content piece, their aim is to educate uh, the Danish population about the benefits of eating eggs. And how they did this was that they made uh, an info quiz and personality test joined in one. So it started off with a quiz where you answer questions about uh, you know, your knowledge of eggs. And with every answer, you, you get feedback. So you, you answer, you learn, and you move on. And then at the end, uh, it tells you, you are this, it, it's kind of a, it's a funny, it's a play on words. It says, what kind of egghead are you? And it tells you, you are this kind of egghead, and here are the recipes that match your needs. So in this way, um, you know, they really managed to get people um, engaged with their content. Uh, if you can see here, um, you know, people also started uh, putting in what their, uh, uh, you know, egghead type was, and they started, you know, they thought it was funny, and they tagged friends and so on. So for them, that was a great way to kind of use something quick and short and get some traction with it. Then we have uh, another one of our customers called Calibo. They are, uh, they supply, uh, they are one of the world's largest uh, chocolate manufacturers for B2B uh, solutions. So that's for chefs and uh, confectioners and bakers and so on. And they introduced this concept of a chuki, which is basically um, a cream puff. It's a typical Danish thing. Um, it is a chocolate um, with cream inside and a biscuit base. And they wanted to get people to smile and get them engaged uh, with what they were trying to say. And so they created this interactive video with a chef here. Um, and he would basically come on. So you would start the video, he would come on, he would say, hi, my name is uh, Kent, and I would like to build you a cream puff. And then you would choose your chocolate type, you would choose the cream, he would choose the base, and then he would start building uh, the, uh, the cream puff for you, and then you could download the recipe. And I'm sorry, this is a video, I can't show this to you right now, but if you want, you can go here later and check out the example on your own. But again, this is a great way of doing, you know, fun, lightweight, you know, engaging, easy to digest content for top of the funnel. Then I have an example by another customer, uh, Benefit Cosmetics. Um, maybe some of you, uh, the ladies here, might know about them. Um, they wanted to repurpose one of their videos and make it more engaging. So they literally took a video that existed and they overlaid a little quiz on top of it. And it's called a What Happens Next Quiz. So um, it starts off with this girl who's uh, blowing out candles on her birthday cake, and then it stops and it says, what happens next? And of course, I know what happens in this video, so I will say her eyelashes catch fire. And then it stops pulling the video, the video plays, and then you see her eyelashes catching fire. And then uh, it goes to, you know, laughter is the best cosmetic, that's the catchphrase. So again, you know, a great little idea, a great way to reuse content that you have and make it more engaging. And, you know, now we're talking, that brings me to the mid of the funnel stage, where now you and the prospect know each other the 
prospect knows who you are, but they don't know what they want. So your job is to establish relationship and trust. You want them to trust you and you want to also influence their decision making process. So there are different formats that work at this stage. Um, here I have an example from um, this company called Easy HIPAA Compliance. And HIPAA basically stands for uh, Health Insurance, and I, sorry, I can't remember the rest of it, but it's a health, uh, it's a health care code uh, for companies in the US, uh, which basically says that uh, patient records have to be confidential, and so on. So it was, this is very B2B, it's a, it's a case for um, companies to assess themselves against HIPAA compliance laws or guidelines. And with this quiz or with this assessment, they already started here with segmentation. So they asked people, you know, answer what kind of company you are. So you answer this, then you get a lead gen form. You fill that out, submit, and then you start answering questions. And then you get your score. So here it says, okay, uh, here is your score. And here is some custom feedback based on your score. This is what we suggest for you. So this really does provide a lot of utility to people. It tells them, you know, it, it gives them uh, a kind of benchmark uh, by which they can, you know, gauge their HIPAA compliance. So that's a nice little example. Moving on. Um, I'm not sure if all of you are food foodies or food nerds like I am, but um, we have this client called MasterChef. Uh, it's a television program. And it's uh, basically what they wanted was uh, they wanted to get more people to um, to uh, sign up for their casting, so MasterChef casting. And they wanted to do it with a fun little quiz. So here they have, you know, what kind of MasterChef are you? So you start the quiz, you answer questions, and then it tells you, okay, uh, you are like this MasterChef, uh, this MasterChef judge. And by the way, you know, if you want to participate, you know, it's not difficult to be a part of uh, a television program and so on. And then there is a CTA here that gets people to sign up for the pro, you know, to be a part of the program. And they got quite a bit of success with this. As you can see, a lot of people were commenting on, on you know, online on, on Facebook, tagging their friends and so on. And they got quite a bit of traction out of that. Now, um, another great example of uh, this kind of mid-funnel content is uh, here again by Calivo. They actually made this concept called Inspire Me. So they have this hashtag called Cal hashtag Calivo Inspire Me. And it's a microsite where they have all of their seasonal recipes constantly updated as the seasons move go on. And at the beginning, you have to choose which segment you belong to. Then you come in again to a uh, legion form. They, again, smart, they have not kept it very long. They've kept a very short form because, again, nobody wants to fill out long forms nowadays. And then you come to this part where then they give you access to all of the recipes. And they also have a section here, um, which is um, their user generated content. As I mentioned earlier, they have this hashtag Calibo Inspire Me. They use this online to get people to share their best recipes. And then they choose the best one and they feature it here. So this is a great way to have, uh, to really get user-generated content spinning online. So, you know, that's great mid-funnel content. Now we are starting to um, get to the, you know, the part where you want to really push uh, the decision, you know, start pushing for sales um, at this point. And there are various options here. There are many different things you can do. And I would take the most classic one, so here I have an example from uh, a bookstore and their goal, of course, is to sell more books. So around summer, there's a campaign which says, uh, what books should I read this summer? And it's a fun little quiz, you know, that you ask uh, fun questions, as you can see here. And then it tells you, OK, based on your answers, I can tell you that these are the books that you should read with CTAs to their web shop. And now, again, we're talking bottom of the funnel content where we want to push for sales. This kind of content is great at telling people, look, you have a need and we're going to help you find out what the solution is. So you use technology or you use this kind of quiz uh, methodology 
to tell people exactly what they should buy. Another great way or another great example of, um, of bottom of the funnel content is uh, to get conversion in, which is of course what we want, is uh, to overlay product videos with hotspots. So here we have Lumbu, which is a uh, vast manufacturer here in Denmark. And they, uh, what we did was we overlaid these hotspots on the videos. So while people were watching and seeing the products, they could actually click on the hotspots and see pictures of the product. They could read more and they could even go to the web shop and buy it. So in this way, you know, just having a flat video where you just watch, it started getting conversion going with these hotspots. Now, um, you know, let's say that we, we went through a few examples now, and I'm sure that these examples, you could probably see your own company doing some of it, or you have your own ideas now with interactive content. So let's try and figure out how you can turn your ideas into high conversion content. So um, firstly, it's important to understand what conversion means to your business. Here we have a typical customer evolution or life cycle mapped out, which starts with your potential customer being, you know, an anonymous unknown person. Um, then you want to convert them to a trackable contact, right? Um, this is typically done with various gating tactics. We talked about them earlier. I won't go through that at length. And then there on, you want to keep qualifying them, right? So you have a lead, you have a contact, but you want to keep qualifying and, and learning what their needs and pains are. There onwards, of course, you want to convert them to a new customer. And there on, you want to keep them, you know, being a loyal customer so they keep coming back and buying more from you. And content really has an important part to play at every single stage here, especially in the beginning. And this is what we call conversion points. Um, and we will just talk a bit more about this uh, in a bit. But before I get there, um, you know, we've discussed traditional conversion tactics, the, the gated lead gen form and so on. And as I said earlier, I think they're getting a bit dated and a bit ineffective in today's, uh, today's um, online space. So I think, you know, we as marketers, we need to think a bit differently. Um, you know, a bit more like a good salesman or like a good saleswoman would. You know, what makes sales successful in closing leads? It's this. They ask relevant questions. Then they listen to the person's answers and then they talk. And this way of doing it is really the best way to sell. And, you know, this is something that we could be inspired by. Now, uh, you know, what does that mean for the marketer? So when you ask somebody something, you are engaging them. People love to talk about themselves. And by listening, you are learning about them. You're learning about the prospect. And when a salesperson then talks after listening, they personalize the pitch or personalize what they want to say based on the person's, what they learned here. So if marketers could think more like this, you know, perhaps, conversion could actually get better. Instead of just sending out the same content to your email list and hoping for the best, you could do it in a more targeted way. Whereas at every step of the way, at every conversion point, you kind of take this engage, learn, personalize methodology and improve conversion at each step. So um, I know that sounds a bit abstract, so I will just try and help you visualize that through an example. Now, um, I have an example here uh, by a company who wants to sell or does sell uh, courses for culinary experts and chefs. And their goal, of course, is to sell more courses. And how they do it is like this. So first they want to figure out, you know, they want to take the person from anonymous to loyal customer or new customer. And to do that, first they figure out, you know, what data do I really need? What data do I need to make this happen? What do I want to know about my customer? So they list out, okay, this is all the stuff that we want to know. I'm sorry, I drew on some of the text. Um, but so what they do is they start out with a quiz 
And the quiz they ask, okay, um, you know, they test your culinary skills and win a knife set. So with that quiz, they figure out and they get the results or they get the prize or something like that. And with this, they know, okay, uh, they turn an anonymous person into a trackable lead. So now they know John Smith, uh, whose email address is john at company.com, he took this quiz, his test score was 90%. And the great thing is he gave us permission to contact him. Here onwards, now so they have asked, they have listened, and now they can talk. Um, what they do with this is really, you know, up to your imagination. They could send, um, they could immediately say, look, you, you have a high score. We suggest these pro courses for you. Or they could send an email saying, hi, uh, these are the courses we suggest for you. Or not. Or they could hold off on promoting something and go to the next stage. So now they've generated a lead. There onwards, they want to qualify the lead. This is really important because this doesn't tell you a lot. You want to keep building on this so that when you sell, when you make pitches later on, if you have sales teams, they have you know, a full record of who this person is. So they send out a personality test. What kind of chef are you? And here they can figure out, okay, so what is John Smith's, what are his characteristics, right? So he's a modern and experimental chef. By his answers, they can tell that he is a modern and experimental chef. He is an innovative chef and he works at a bistro. So now they have qualified the lead and here onwards, they can say, hey, uh, you know, innovative chef, we have these new uh, courses, uh, you know, new food trend courses that you might be interested in. So they can personalize the content immediately when, the, when John gets the results for the test. And thereafter, they can even send him more targeted campaigns. Then, you know, they want to keep, you know, building on his profile. They want to keep nurturing this lead. They want to keep nurturing John Smith. So then they, they, they send out a recipe lookbook, which is again gated, uh, but it has a collection of new recipes. Uh, and from the clicks, uh, from the navigation, they can tell, you know, that, that John's interests are French sauces. And from the gating um, technique, they can tell that John Smith works at Olive Bistro and his job role is the head chef. Now, okay, let's say sales takes over and sales has all of this information now. And they say, all right, you know what? This guy, uh, he's a head chef and he's interested in innovative uh, cooking. And, you know, let's try and see uh, if he's a head chef, maybe we want to send him a productivity assessment. So they do that. And from that, they figure out that his team size is six people and his challenges are inventory, waste time, wastage and time management. So now when sales takes over at this stage, they have a full view on who John Smith is and they can do much more targeted pitches. So, you know, that is, um, it's quite complex, but I hope it, it, it gives you the idea that I'm trying to get at, the, the concept of asking, listening, and then talking. So, you know, if you are thinking of interactive content, there are a lot of options. Everything doesn't have to be fresh and newly made. Uh, you can even kind of repurpose content that you already have on shelf um, and, uh, and go with that. For example, I showed you the blog post that I turned into a quiz. You can do that. You can take facts that you know and turn that into a quiz with points. You can make a fun personality test. You can turn your benchmark studies into assessments or solution builders. You can turn ebooks into interactive white papers. You can make pictures into lookbooks. Um, you know, turn product videos into shoppable videos. There's so many options here. You'll get the slide later. I won't read everything out for you. But there are loads of things that you can do, loads of ways in which you can take what you have and inject some excitement and some interactivity into it. So, you know, with that, I will end my slides. <laughs> and I will also say that if you found today's uh, presentation inspiring, if you have some ideas, you know, go on, uh, sign up uh, on DOT. You can get a free trial for 30 days. Um, and we have loads and loads. We have over 50 templates that you can choose from. So you don't have to start from scratch. Uh, just kind of take something that we have, personalize it with your content and your branding and, and just publish and get started. So with that, I would like to draw my presentation to a close and encourage you to now ask me any questions you might have.
Kaini, uh, Joan Ribeiro here. Thank you so much for your wonderful presentation. So if you have questions for Nia, you can type them in the chat box and uh, Nia will kindly answer. So now it's your chance to do that. And while you do that, let me tell you how you can get the slides from today's presentation. We're going to send a short survey after the webinar is done. If you don't get it today, we'll get it tomorrow morning. After you finalize that two to three minute uh, survey, you will be uh, asked to download the slides. So I see we have a, a question, but the question I guess already answered that question. So Abby, you will get a copy of the presentation if you fill in the survey. So let's see if we have questions. I see people typing at the moment. Yeah, and let me tell you that uh, some other things you presented here today, uh, I can kind of relate to them because, uh, for example, the marketeer thing you showed previously, something that Marketer could actually do, and then we're thinking about doing it and using a solution to do it because, uh, as you mentioned before, it's a tool that does not, does not require any IT expertise to conduct this kind of interactive function, so that's great. Our team is not that big, so it is a very good solution. And the, the, the things you said about repurposing of content is also very important because uh, we create a lot of content that uh, we tend to not to use, and this is a great way to grab that content we have on the shelf and then use it to other purposes and towards that reduced cost of so Let's see if we have questions here. Maria is asking if there's a more detailed presentation of the product. <clears throat> Maria, you, you will also have access to uh, Nia's uh, contact details, so you can request for them or you can get some free trial to test the platform later. So you will have access to that, all that information. Okay, let me see what else do we have here. Okay, so it's it's related to to the product. So if you want more information about the product, you can request that information on the survey as well. So I have a question here, Nia. Um, it is um, from Fred No, and is asking how do you relate the company culture with the content marketing creation maturity level? Well, I think. Um... I think I actually saw recently um, a model of content creation maturity by Rebecca Leib, I believe. And um, the way she looks at it, I don't have that slide with me right now. But how it works is that kind of like crawling to walk. Right? So imagine at the crawling level, um, you are in this phase where you are still kind of toying with the idea of uh, content, cre uh, content marketing. And then you start, you know, dabbling in it. So you're now starting to crawl a bit. Then you start, um, you know, you start doing it, and then you start getting an expert at it. And then finally, at the at the end of the spectrum, you can actually monetize your content. Uh, that means that you know you might be a company doing content marketing, but you can even sell your content. So you know that there's a whole spectrum of content maturity. And I think uh, your company culture it really depends on on where you are on that stage. So, let's say that uh, you are you know you are already running with uh, with content marketing. Then it depends on you know how how active you are, how organized you are. Um, one thing I would say about company culture is that the best way to get a content strategy is to get structured and is to have a clear strategy. So um, I actually did a talk uh, last week on, um, on how to build a content marketing strategy. Um, and what's really important there is that you should document what it is you want to achieve with your content marketing. Uh, document your personas, document your goals, and document also how you plan on creating that content. So I would say from company culture point of view, the more organized you are, the, the more you have, uh, a documented plan, the better it is going to be for your results. I hope that answers your question.
Thank you so much, Nia. It does help. Uh, at least it helped me understanding a little bit about this uh, maturity level. Um, I hope Fred did got the same. And he's, he's uh, currently saying yes. So we have um, we have a question from Claudia. And that uh, Claudia uh, Nia is uh, currently in Denmark. So uh, I'll, I'll I don't know who's. Uh, could assist you in content marketing here, but uh, if you try to find a solution like this solution from Dot, uh, you can have um, that information later today when you um, fill in the survey and you can request to, to learn a little bit more about how to create this type of content. Uh, no problem, Claudia. Um, I'm also from Portugal and uh, with just uh, a, a small detail here. Okay, so if we don't have any more questions, uh, I would like to thank you all for attending today's webinar. We will have a, a, some other webinars coming in April, and uh, you will get them, um, the information about this webinar through the, our newsletter. If you haven't signed in yet, uh, you will have a chance to do that. And uh, let me just remind you, all of you again, that uh, you will get a survey, and when you fill in that survey, you will have access to today's presentation slides. Plus, you could request more information about DOT and how to create content like this. So, thank you again for coming, and uh, we will close the webinar in a moment. And while we don't close it, you can use the chat box to ask some more other questions, and uh, we will be here for five to ten minutes. Okay, thank you so much to attend the webinar today. Yeah, thanks, Joao. And thanks everyone for joining again. Um, I know everyone has a busy schedule, so I do hope that the, the presentation gave you some ideas. And again, uh, as Joel said, you can reach out to me. I am typing my email address as we speak. If you have any questions, just reach out and uh, I'll help you out. So uh, thanks and have a great day. Thank you, Nita. Thank you so much for the lovely presentation today. Thanks. Thanks for having us.